another episode of Africa Farming. My name as always is Samuel. In this uh, episode of the farm tour, we'll be visiting the Bissell livestock market and I'll be taking you through the different sections of the market so you are able to see what is actually involved uh, you know, in a real life market. So um, let's journey together. Remember, if you're interested in going to any market to buy any livestock, make sure you get up so early in the morning. It's around 6 a.m. And that is the time that we are going. So make sure you wake up very early in the morning. So let's journey together. We have a number of universities along the way, such as this one here, Uma University in Kajiado town. Others include East Africa University, KAG University, Kampala International University, Islamic University of Kenya, just to mention but a few. Kajiado County is mainly a semi-arid area, but there have been some prolonged rains since November last year that has greatly changed how green this place looks. You can see how awesome uh, this area looks. Bissell Market is located in Bissell Town, otherwise known as Il Bissell by the native Maasai community. It is approximately 107 kilometers from Nairobi City via the Nairobi Namanga Road A104. We arrived at the market around 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, it's always advisable. If you're not a native of this area, look for a native who speaks the language and is known by most of the sellers. Otherwise, if you're foreign, the price at which you'll buy animals and other paraphernalia will be double or even triple. This is one of the brokers who can go around looking for what you want and get it for you as you relax, maybe in a tea kiosk or if you came with a car in your car, of course at a cost. So as you can see, this is the first goat that was brought to me by a broker and I was inspecting whether it fits the bill. But since I had just arrived, I thought it was wise to check out what the other traders had before deciding whether to buy um, this one or not. If you're to get a broker, budget for at least a thousand shillings, or for those people who are not in Kenya, around um, 10 US dollars as his brokerage fee. All you need to tell him is what you're looking for and what your budget is. He will bring several uh, of these breeds within your description and it will be up to you to select the one you want, after which he'll link you up to the owner and you'll be able to do the trade. But be careful because some brokers will just sell you uh, any breed of the animal that you want, regardless of checking out, just because they have a target for the day. So in as much as you have your native broker, make sure you also know how to inspect livestock in terms of their health and general well-being. This market plays a pivotal role in a lot of trade, not just livestock. So you can see there are so many other things being sold around. It's estimated that on a typical market day, which for Bissell market is always around Mondays and Fridays, over 1,000 heads of cattle and approximately 3,000 goats and sheep always change hands. Of course, we have other markets around Kajiado County, such as the Sajiloni market, which I'm sure in one of these fine days we'll be able to tour and see what happens around those areas. So when I arrived, uh, my broker, Benjamin, had not arrived, but here you can see he's already arrived, and I'm with him as I brief him on the type of goods and the characteristics I'm looking out for and what my budget is. For those who want to purchase goats for your festivities or you want to rear them at your farm, just know that the price of goats based on the season uh, will range between 3,000 shillings to as high as even 30,000 depending on the breed. But again also, it depends on the season. Right now I came during Easter festivities, so the prices of course are high uh, compared to when it's not really close to a holiday. The 
this is a native who's actually inspecting a ship he's just checking whether uh, the weight is good uh, if maybe uh, it is healthy and all that I'm sure you've noticed the road that I always walk with. It's actually part and parcel of all the videos that I've shot. This is part of the Maasai culture and is given to men after circumcision. The black one is more of a prestigious one that goes through a longer process to make and is more expensive. So if you want one, let me know via comments or our phone number in the description section and we can even brand it for you with your name on it. So here Benjamin had found two of the four goats I was looking for and was telling me what the owner wants in terms of the price. Unfortunately, the owner was selling both, not one, and it was a condition for the sale. And through my own inspection, I preferred picking one of them. So this deal wasn't successful. These lorries belong to the Nairobi traders I was talking about. Once you see a lot of these, just know that the price is going to change in a few. These guys spoil the market for us smallholder farmers, but the net effect is that those who sell the goats get good profits. I'm told some people arrive so early to pick the best breeds and buy them at very low negotiated prices and wait for the real Nairobi traders who actually supply to markets in Nairobi such as Bama and resell to them at higher prices since these uh, market traders, Nairobi market traders, don't negotiate and they always buy in large numbers. Now large numbers of these animals are destined for slaughterhouses and other markets in and around Nairobi and the livestock keepers who actually bring these animals to the market come as far away as Tanzania and of course across the South Rift where Kajiado is. If you see marked goats or sheep or livestock in this market, just know those ones have been sold and are waiting to be picked. And yes, even the beast of burden is sold at this market. They go for approximately between 8,000 shillings to 12,000 depending on the breed and the status of the donkey. This section is where I almost got a heart attack. I have never known cows and bulls are extremely expensive. Here, you can not get any bull or any cow for less than 120 shillings. And that is just for a cow or a bull that weighs around 230 kilograms, which as per the market is kinda one of the least uh, in terms of weight. <laughs> I have no immediate plans of keeping these, but it was good to know some of these things. Maybe eventually when I would want to add cows, I will think about getting it from, you know, I don't know, but anyway.
If you're a fan of traditional medicinal herbs, you will get them here. The natives mix these herbs while preparing their meals and this has made them resistant to so many common diseases. It's actually said that the uh, mortality rate around this area is actually low uh, courtesy of these medicinal herbs. So when you're here, consider asking one or two questions about them and you know, get to learn how it may actually help you health-wise. Clothes and shoes are also sold at the market, as well as other traditional paraphernalia such as spears, shields, among others. Of course, you know me, I had to get myself a spear. I am a warrior for that matter. <laughs> I loved the god that this lady was selling, and I didn't want to negotiate a lot because her price was very fair, so I ended up taking it. These women play a vital role in the market's ecosystem. They buy typical edible fat from livestock keepers and prepare very delicious meals. From the white solid rendered fat of these sheep and cattle, we get rongena, a very nicely dried snack. There are no additives added and this is purely organic. So, a cup of rongena is sold at 50 shillings. Uh, of course, it's a nice snack to share and bond with the people that you've come with uh, at the market. Remember, it's always advisable to come with other people, not just you alone, because there are so many things that happen at the same time and you need to be aware of all of them. So coming with one or two people will help you do all these simultaneous activities together. Um, of course, here I tagged along with Jackton, and you know benjamin joined you can see we are sharing rongena and we had our own mini party <laughs> and of course uh, our other friend also joined Finally, I got my four goats, sigh of relief. Three male and one female. It is not always an assurance that you'll get what you're looking for. So for me, it was actually a very good day because I got what I was looking for. Two bucks were meant to be slaughtered during the Easter festivities and one was to remain and breed at the farm. Of course, the female one was for purposes of breeding and multiplication. Before exiting, you have the county officials at the gate who are responsible for giving permits. So we paid 50 shillings per goat so as to be allowed to ferry the goats to the farm. Then this young boy uh, helped us mark our goats. Sad story is that he's not in school because of fees. I actually thought public schools were free. President Ruto Banner, do something. Basic education needs to be free as former President Kibaki had done. Very sad to see kids with a very bright future doing this to get their school fees. So here, Benjamin and I were discussing his fees and we agreed on a thousand shillings as I told you initially, which was extremely fair for me, uh, uh, bearing in mind that he had done all the hassle. After loading the goats uh, on the car, we were so hungry, so we had to go take some breakfast in one of the tea kiosks. The tea here is out of this world, not like the urban version. This one has good organic milk and it has more milk than water. So for white tea fans, you know what I mean. Chapati of course made Esco for our tea. And let me not say much. If you ever happen to be in Masailand, 
ask them for their chapatis. You'll never go back to your usual chapatis. So now we are heading back to the farm uh, with our new flock of four goats. One thing that we have to do is we have to deworm them and inject them with oxytetracycline. Remember, yes, you inspected them at the market, but that doesn't mean that they might not carry those secondary infections here and there. So to prevent spread of these infections, should they have them, to your existing flock at the farm, you need to inject them with this oxytetracycline and of course because you've changed a location of you know uh, where these goats or sheep or whichever livestock that you bought uh, used to graze or get their pasture you have to deworm so that the previous parasites <laughs> can actually be you know rid of or whatever it is that they'll consume in the new place uh, with the parasites that we'll have will actually be well taken care of by the dewormers that you will give them. So that is the purpose as to why we have to deworm and inject with tetracycline. to inject is very tricky and thus you have to be very careful not to inject wrongly or else you may paralyze the goats or even kill them and that's it for this episode i hope you have found value in it let's know your comments and ensure you subscribe to our channel and follow us on our socials at africa farming ke on facebook x and instagram and at africa.farming on tiktok for more behind the scenes and until next time changamuka na ukulima bye bye